and you know a lot of times I'll ask people I said well how much you know snow do you uh, what's your snow load oh we don't get too much snow here I said well, what's the biggest snow you ever got you know oh yeah that was pretty big uh, but normally we don't get that much you need if you're gonna leave a tree house out there and you want it to stay out there for 10 20 50 years you need to you need to build for that you don't you don't have to but it's, it doesn't really cost that much more when you're actually doing it that, uh, that you spend the money and do your foundation because everything is built off your foundation. And so if you understand, well, it's basically the principle, the bigger it is, <laughs> the more weight you're going to have to hold up there. You either, you're going to need more GLs or bigger GLs or, or tabs or whatever you call them. You're going to need bigger, you're going to be, you need to support bigger point loads. Uh, this one is a very complicated platform that I did. This is in five different trees. We did stabilizer boxes. This is one sort of like that the hobby did, all right? Um, and that's, that's one big oak tree out there that supports all that whole load. This is another one here. This is a big popular tree. Um, and then this is a, a beech tree and then another white oak out here. So this is all in the same plane, well, you know, sort of well bolted together. And uh, hopefully you can see the steel frame on this. This deck on this thing is like, a, oh, shoot, I don't know, over a thousand feet. And then it's got a two story building on it. So we've come to this is my next project. That, you know, once it's a treehouse, this is we're actually going to be a handicap accessible treehouse, so it's going to have a ramp to it. Uh, and I wanted to make it relatively big. Numbers on this of what the different lo point loads and everything are, and what everything has to carry. It just doesn't make sense to me. I, you would think that this tree, what this tree holds and this tree holds, the point loads, would be relatively the same, you know. And, but it turns out that this one is over twice as much as that one, and that's what I can't understand. So I'm going to turn it over to Bill, so if he can try to explain that to me. Michael, thank you so much. Uh, wonderful speech. As I shared with you, he's a smart guy. He went to college, and not everybody has his experience. So please be careful before you apply what he mentioned, because not everybody has his wonderful experience. I just would like to add to uh, what Michael said, which is correct, by the way. I second that. Uh, that uh, also we have to add the wind and the seismic into it, which make the load um, no longer equal at the four bolts, in case of four. So it does tend to increase on some area and uh, decrease on the other area. Uh, uh, also, sometimes the movement uh, of the tree will, uh, unless you allow movement, it will cause uh, very high stresses on the bolts. Right, uh, that's one of the reasons for the sliding brackets yes. uh, and the sliding motion. Uh, just to let you share you, you know, this is one tree house for Michael. Which one is that? That is Magis Tree. That's, yeah, that's this big one up here. Yeah, that's a big one. You see how thick it is? This is the calculation for one tree house. Here is the bottom line. Uh, most building department don't, do not have education about tree houses. They don't know what, the, what it is. And this is what they usually do with these at the building department. <laughs> okay. Number one, don't use nails uh, in tree house. It's a bad idea and it uh, doesn't hold very much. Uh, do not use also leg screws. Just typical leg screw that you buy from the hardware store. Please do not use it. Also, don't put too many close to each other because it hurts the tree. Don't use uh, Simpson hanger. Anybody familiar with the, the, the Simpson catalog that, that used for uh, uh, wood construction? If you are attaching a, a dead wood to dead wood, like a beam to joist or something, go ahead by all means and use Simpson catalog connection. But if you are connecting to a living tree, do not use uh, uh, any hardware from, uh, uh, from Simpson catalog. Also, don't connect so many things to the same uh, bolt. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't put your beams too close to the tree because the tree is going to grow and uh, uh, surround it and it could decay. Good connection. Good connection, of course. Uh, you have uh, a Michael Garnier limb bolt, which is very good. Uh, what I sometimes worry, guys, about the bolt, when it can deliver away from the tree, it tends to have to bend a little bit. So if you'd like to stop that bending, which is excellent idea, go ahead and hang it. You can hang it to the top. 
Uh, if you see at this, uh, guys, this vault, this vault uh, is, a, is a good one, like a Michael and Pete, and it has a cable going up, support here. It is good, it's better than if the bolt by itself, but I would love to see this one on the outside rather than the inside. Here's my favorite. You go at the end and you have an e-brace and you have another bolt, that's my favorite. Definitely, is it, in my opinion, the, the best. Well, then uh, you got that with the, actually with the suspender. Oh, here you go. I added with suspender too, and by the way, they ignored, when I added the knee press and the, the, the cable, they ignored one of them. Here is another uh, one uh, that uh, really has two knee braces. Here is uh, uh, a through bolt, guys. This is actually one of Greenwood's first uh, examples of doing the through bolt with the, it's got a five eighths inch bolt through it, but then it's got like two inch uh, uh, bosses or, or rods that are that are held into the, into the tree with the with the five inch. So you got two two inch uh, sleeves on each side, one on each side of the tree, held in there by the five inch bolt. If you are doing an e-brace, again, don't use Simpson connector. Use the connector. Here's uh, another good one right here. As we shared with you, you have to uh, have to allow the tree to move. One of the things, the tree is elastic too. It's more elastic when it's alive. So it. Uh, if you compress, if you over compress your, your dead wood, it's gonna stay over, it's not gonna bounce back. It doesn't bounce back near as much as your live wood. But your dead wood is actually will hold more weight than your live wood. The tree houses move, they just keep, they're constantly moving. And I don't want any chance of them dropping out of there, but. Where's those plans? We're gonna go over here to, uh, oh. and, and uh, take a look at these. Uh, battle with him over how, how we're going to make this uh, I the best uh, billet tree. I want to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> These are the plans for this, and this is the way, the way they're orientated. Namil looked at this little thing and goes, oh man, that's not, that's not big enough, man. I'm going to have to, you know, uh, you got to put a post in here. You know? and, but that, that's a white oak. That's a sturdy white oak. Part of it is educating the, the engineers and you know, getting more engineers to understand how trees work because it's, you guys don't you learn that in school or anything. That, that is the key. See, honestly, we engineers don't have education about tree houses in the school. When we went to, I went to Kansas State. I never had school. Tom went to Oregon Institute of Technology yeah. in our school, and we both learned it in Garnier School. Okay. <laughs> well, so. So, but one of the things, you know, Nabil, uh, you know, and we recommend and, and, uh, for a GL, they can't, see, they can't really certify that a GL is going to hold so much weight. I put a rating on them as, as 4,000 pounds in dug fur. But one of the things Nabil says, well, uh, it's best if you go out and mm -hmm. test them in your area, your tree. It would make your engineer a lot happier probably if if need be if there's not familiar with the GL or the tab to show them a test and do a test in your area that you you're doing it on the local this may help the local uh, inspector too what i'm having a hard time with on this is that the numbers they're coming up with is that this tree this tree over here which is in the back corner of, the, of it and and that tree there and the tree house is in, you know kind of well, it's, I guess it's a little bit more on this side of this tree, but this one he's saying is gonna take more than twice as much load as that one there. And I'm, I just can't figure, I don't get it. I don't, I guess part of it is, is, is that, uh, that because of the unbalanced load and the roof or whatever, but, but one of the things we, you know, coming here and looking at it, we may change something around. So we, we're gonna try, he's gonna run the numbers, and we're going to, instead of having, I was having a beam run uh, this side of this one to this side of here, this side of this one over to, to this oak, and then in, in between here, out here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna try, we're gonna run the numbers, we're gonna put an under beam in here, in between this tree and that tree. And then this beam that goes from here is not gonna to come to this tree, it's gonna be straight, it's gonna come straight this way, and then it's gonna carry the ridge better. Because the other way we have it, he's said, telling me the cantilevers, I know cantilevers cause more force and everything like that, but we're gonna straighten this beam out and, and see what kind of, see what the numbers do then. 